signal's getting stronger now. It won't be long. Come quick! The monster that ate my pappy! Do you really think this was a bear duck? Highly unlikely. First man on Mars. Once Wait he was human. There's something shiny in the rock. This is really starting to sting. Now a bloodthirsty monster killing and devouring the young. And not so innocent. Let's take a look at this, huh? I'm gonna blast the thing back to hell. Oh, shit. First man on Mars. You mean there's aliens out here? Shit. I don't want to get ducted in anal. This film is not rated. The following feature has been rated R by the Motion Picture Association of America. Ah! Your kiss is cold and icy as death. Ah! Ava's been murdered. That's nonsense. He wants to kill me too. Ah! Nights of blood, nights of terror that will leave you breathless. Bloody Moon. explores the most provocative power of all. A woman who lives in two worlds. They are strangers. They are lovers. had a lot of strange experiences after all these years in the film business, but I have to say the Fantastic Four ranks somewhere near the top. I think this documentary is, is, I think it's about time. Hopefully, it might be like the last piece of this whole puzzle. The great untold, never seen version, the original Fantastic Four. Finally, after 20 years, this story is going to be told. Unfortunately, this version of the Fantastic Four really was Doomed. There's a light up there. They're a liar. Martini on the rocks with a twist of lemon. Very dry, please. Just give him whiskey. He's new in town. Many elements of the Delos Resort are potentially dangerous. That's part of the appeal. Go on. You say something, boy. Kill him. Your move. We know you'll enjoy your stay in Westworld. Hold it. The ultimate resort. Let me do it this time. Where nothing, nothing can possibly go wrong. I'm shot. Go wrong. Raw. Go wrong. Oh, my God. Shut down. Shut down immediately. <laughs> Westworld from MGM. What is happening? What is all of this? Did you see that article? 
every year these liberal elites kidnap a bunch of normal folks like us and hunt us for sport. We were joking. I'm playing an Arab refugee, but I identify as white. I think that's problematic too, in some way. What? What kind of sick people would even think of something like that? White people. We're the worst. Greetings, fiends, and welcome to the Horror Mike Show on this fine and fiendish Fright Day evening. I am Horror Mike, and uh, you are watching the Horror Mike Show, of course. And boy, do we have a hell of a lineup for you tonight. Holy Toledo, we're doing physical media, folks. You just saw a mix of some films we'll be looking at on Tubi and some films on physical media that you might want to think about getting before it's too late okay a couple of things i need to point out to you about physical media and uh, what's going on in the streaming world today which is not pretty okay so fasten your seat belts put on your helmet get ready it's going to be a bumpy ride uh but to before that trailer of all those fantastic films you saw a trailer for my film first man on mars and i put the link in the chat already and i'm going to highlight that right now because it's worth highlighting there it is folks that is the link to my film first man on mars on blu-rays limited edition signed and numbered okay and uh, once you have your blu-ray you have a particular number of course and that number may be drawn to win one of two movie props used in the film yes I, you heard that right, folks. You could win one of two authentic movie props with certificate of authenticity. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So scoot on over to horroranthologymovies.com forward slash first men on Mars Blu-ray and get yourself a copy today. That's what I'm saying right now, my good fiends. And as I posted on top, Remember to like and subscribe, folks. Uh, hit that like button like it's nobody's business, okay? That's what I'm saying right now. So, uh, first off, let's take a little look at the chat and see who's in tonight on this fine and fiendish Friday evening. Gary Carlisle is here. Hello, Gary. Great to see you. My good man. Werewolf by Lunchtime is here. Hey, Mike and chat, you'll be pleased to know that you will all be alive in 13 hours time. This is good news. And I was a little concerned, werewolf. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about the stock tips later. Apex Comics is here. Hello, Apex. Great to see you, my good man. Good Lord. Shadowhawk Talks is here. Hello, Shadowhawk. Good to see you. Jacob Bornowski is here. Hello, Jacob. Great to see you, my good man. Shadowhawk says, Apex Comics Fembat coming soon. There you have it, folks. That is happening uh, soon from Apex Comics. Horror Mike Friday. Yep, you got it, man. That is that's what's going on. Steve Harrison is here. Hello, Steve. Good to see you. Werewolf says, is one of the movie props a bikini top? I know it's bikini bottom, Werewolf, and it's well used. Hold on. Nice. God. No, it's a bikini bottom, Werewolf, and it's well used. <laughs> There we go. So, in any case, let's get back to the commentary. 
Shadowhawk says, yeah, baby, I'm in. Who dares challenge me? There you go, right there, folks. <laughs> okay. All right, fiends. Check it out. Now, tonight, we are talking about physical media first. Now, wait a second. We've got somebody else. It's crazy Hungarian is with us tonight, folks. Been waiting all week. Let the weirdness begin. And it is crazy Hungarian. Uh, well, you missed the, the warm-up trailers, but we will be showing those tonight. So no worries, mate. You will be seeing those. We got some doozies for you tonight, folks. If you saw the intro trailer, we got all kinds of flicks. 80s and 90s exploitation grindhouse flicks, including Bloody Moon. That was the first trailer you saw, Burial Ground. And uh, amongst others, there are some uh, trailers in there that were for uh, physical media that I'm going to be showing tonight. Very important. We're going to be taking a look first at physical media stuff and talking about that because it's become more important, especially now, okay, with what they're doing to movies. Oh, yes, the great revision is taking place, folks, and it's not a pretty picture. Steve says, talking physical media, I was in Toys R Us, had a vinyl section, DVD, Blu-ray section, and T-shirts, like a time warp to a blockbuster. Okay, folks. Physical media. Now. Before we get into the hardcore nuts and bolts of it, because that's going to be kind of in the second half of the physical media show, what I want to do is show you some really kind of choice physical media items that I have, okay? And I think you'll be rather interested in seeing these. So we're going to go first. We're going to go real old school we're not talking blu-rays and dvds folks no we're not even talking vhs okay no 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 no. we're talking real old school with a little super eight for example here is star wars yes it's the 10 minutes condensed version of star wars on super eight <laughs> and it's still it's still together folks this freaking thing is like 40 years old, and I can still play it on my projector. There you go. And this version is in black and white. So the thing about, of course, film is that you do, after a period of time, you can experience a, a like color separation thing where you just basically get reds and blacks on the screen. Well, with black and white, it just lasts forever. So the image is pretty much exactly the same, you know. Uh, so that's a plus about black and white. Of course, the minus is that it's not in color. But sharp image looks really great. This is the 10-minute condensed version of Star Wars. Okay. Now let's get let's get real cute. Super 8 version of Equinox. Yes, the Dennis Murin classic film with great David Allen animation. Absolute groundbreaking film. Originally from 1967, the $6,000 version that was shot on a Bolex wind-up 16 millimeter camera. And then Jack Harris got a hold of it and released a, uh, how would you say, like a spruced up version of Equinox. He dumped another hundred grand into it. And uh, that was the theatrical release that occurred in 1970. But this is the Super 8. Yeah, but weird. Yeah, from United Artista. The Super 8 version of Equinox. Still good, too. This is also black and white. So it's lasted, you know, at most it might have a few scratches on it. Something like that. Yeah. Now, here's here's fancy deluxe stuff here for you, folks. It is the Incredible Melting Man Super 8 Color and Sound. 
Oh, yes, it is the Cadillac of Super 8 films right here. Woohoo, dog. Look at that. I just, the cover is so damn good. Now, this was Rick Baker's first feature film job, you know, and uh, he did an excellent job with it. If you've seen the film, The Incredible Melting Man, it's really quite something. It's also on Tubi, folks, if you wish to check it out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know about this one. I've had it for years. Let's take a quick look, shall we? It's probably, it's probably gone red, you know, or at least yellow. I don't know. Hard to tell. I may have to run it through the projector, folks. I don't know. But this is, so this is when I was a kid. This is what we had, okay? We didn't have no fancy VHS or DVDs, all right? We had to get our Super 8 films. That's what I'm talking about right now. So that's how we watched our got our favorite films and uh, that brings me to some these are some kind of like standard uh, specialty DVD releases they're not there's a there's a separation I like to call like for instance box sets are pretty standard usually speaking then there's the gimmicky kind of releases which aren't bad some of those are really cool and I'm going to show you a few of those but we're going to start off with just some standard classic releases going back to Equinox. Now, this is the Criterion DVD release of Equinox, which contains the two films. The first film, which was made for six thousand bucks, was was called The Equinox, A Journey into the Supernatural. Then they released it as Equinox. Right. And so in this particular set you've got the two discs and of course it's criterion so they just they knock it out of the park man you got a book a booklet all about the making of equinox which is freaking fantastic with a little message from george lucas because as I said, this is a, you know, a Dennis Murin film. Just six years after this was released in 1970, Dennis Murin would be doing the special effects for Star Wars. Okay. That's how it all began for Dennis Murin with Equinox. Highly recommended DVD or Blu-ray. But the Criterion is great because it's got the two versions of the film and the booklet of the making of. So that is recommended, folks. Next up, a fantastic nine movie box set of Val Luton. It's the Val Luton Horror Collection. And this thing just kicks butt. Okay. Let me show you there. Here's all the films, of course. You probably are familiar with Cat People. Now, that was the Jacques Tonnerre directed film produced by Val Luton. And then you have Curse of the Cat People, which was actually directed by Robert Weiss, a great uh, American director, known for films like The Andromeda Strain, for example. And, of course, I Walked with a Zombie, The Body Snatcher, which is fantastic, Boris Karloff. Bedlam, The Seventh Victim, and then they have Shadows in the Dark. On the top here, you can see that Shadows in the Dark. It is a documentary about the Val Luton films, produced films. So there you go, nine movies in all. Highly recommended. You can probably pick this up for 20 or 30 bucks, which is a steal, really, folks. I mean, it's fantastic. Great box set, highly recommended. Okay. Another one. I just love this one. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip order here. 
I'm going to go to this one because this is Kino. Kino release of American Silent Horror. It is the American Silent Horror collection from Kino. And it's freaking fantastic. I don't know if you can see this on the back, but it's got The Man Who Laughs. Of course, Conrad Bate. Just fantastic film. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Of course, Cat and the Canary. The Penalty down there. And there is a bonus DVD, Kingdom of Shadows. Yeah, it's a documentary. So, yeah, this is great, man. So each one is like its own, you know, standard DVD type of thing. There you go, John Barrymore, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Really cool. Once again, this is not going to cost you. I mean, God, you, I would imagine you can pick up this DVD set. I think I paid like 10 bucks or 15 bucks for this. Well worth it, you know. And uh, so, you know, if you're interested, of course, eBay is probably the best bet. But it is American Silent Horror Collection, five DVD set. Now, we're coming to a little later in the game, 1981, of course, The Evil Dead. This is the ultimate edition from Anchor Bay. Oh, yes. This thing is freaking insane, folks. Check this out. It's the ultimate edition, all right. Holy shit. <clears throat> so, as you can see here, it's a three-disc set. I don't know if you guys have seen this. You've got disc one, which is widescreen. Disc two is the full frame. And then you have disc three, which is Ladies of the Evil Dead. Absolutely fantastic. And I believe, now let's, let's check this out, shall we? Yeah, that's right. Check this shit out, man. Comes with the with this box set. It's the original Evil Dead. Let me check that Evil Dead poster out, folks. Is that swank or what? The double sided. Pretty damn cool. So, those are just kind of normal uh, DVD box sets, you know, that I have. But there's some other ones I'm going to show you now that are a little, what I would call, like, more of a gimmick type of thing. But I think that, I mean, these are types of DVD or Blu-ray sets that, you know, some of them are, like, obviously they're just trying to sell the same stuff over again. They just kind of repackage it and put some stuff in it or whatever. I think they did a great job with these particular ones. I've had these for years once again. And sticking with the Evil Dead theme, this, of course, is the Evil Dead Book of the Dead edition. <laughs> and that's, as you can see, if you look closely, you can see this is a foam book. It's like foam rubber, right? You can see where it's already rotting. I have had this thing for years and years. I'm going to take it out. This th this is just a beauty, folks. Just a freaking beauty. It, it literally looks like the book from the film, right? Really cool. You can still get these on eBay. I would say for like under, you know, 50 bucks. Something like that. But it's got some of the original, like as you recall from the movie, some of the original uh, drawings from the Book of the Dead, which is really cool.
and a little booklet on the Evil Dead, of course, right there. Pretty nice. But this thing is like, it is, it's definitely, it, it's, uh, you know, kind of crunchy now. The, the old foam is hardened up and it's gotten kind of crunchy. As foam rubber tends to do is one of those things, latex. If you've ever owned latex masks and you've had them for decades, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They just start disintegrating, as you can see on the uh, binding there, right on the spine. It's just coming off, folks. But I love it. I love my little Evil Dead Book of the Dead. I've had plenty of successful uh, resurrections with it. I mean, no, just, just kidding. Or am I? I'm saying right now. Next up, certainly uh, one of my favorites. I love the series. I don't know if you ever, if you guys ever saw this particular uh, offering for the Masters of Horror. Yes, it's a mausoleum folks an actual mausoleum for the masters of horror is that trippy or what i got this once once again geez i may have had this for like 20 years i don't know 15 20 years now something like that and so of course you take off the top so how that goes And then you got all the the discs on the inside. Pretty simple operation, really. All right. Pull a disc out, and there we have Dario Argento's lovely little film, Jennifer. If you haven't seen that one, seek it out. I believe it is also on Tubi. I think the entire Masters of Horror series is on Tubi. If you haven't seen Jennifer, don't eat anything uh, before you see it or during the film. Okay, that's what I'm saying right now. Because it's a, it is a sick puppy, folks. But in any case, so that's the mausoleum for Masters of Horror, the series. And I dig the living hell out of it, folks. Oopsie. It's getting a little, a little carried away there. All right. There we go. Next up, I've seen these on eBay. You guys may have seen these too. This is the uh, Forbidden Planet Special Edition uh, tin box for the DVD that came out. I don't know. I want to say like 2010 it may have been earlier than that a little earlier probably not that much earlier but in any case check this out and these were cheap man i got i think i originally bought this new for i think it was uh geez louise what the hell oh there we go for 10 bucks I got this baby for 10 bucks. It's the 50th anniversary edition. Check out what's inside of this thing. It's absolutely amazing. Of course, it comes with the 50th anniversary DVD, naturally. <laughs> And a, a, an advertisement for a life-size Robbie the Robot. Order yours today, folks, right there. Yep. Let's see what they do. They have a price on this thing. I, I want to say it was around $10,000. Somewhere in that realm, you know, for a life-size Robbie the Robot. Pretty damn cool. Yeah, and then they had all of these lobby cars. 
So the lobby cards are miniaturized. Obviously. There you go. There's an, an example. A classic Forbidden Planet lobby card. They got a ton of them. Really cool. So there's that. Okay. And last but not least, folks. Yes, it also came with the Robbie. Whoa, shit. I just took a dive. It's all right, though. It survived, folks. It also came with the little Robbie the Robot figure. Can you believe that? Now, that's one hell of a, what I would call a gimmick box set right there for the 50th anniversary edition. It's your little Robbie. Really freaking cool. So, this one I have seen, I, I believe I've seen it on eBay for around 30 bucks, maybe 40, 40 bucks. Pretty damn cheap. As I said, I originally bought mine for 10 bucks, which is insanely cheap, folks, uh, for all the stuff you get. So quite, quite nice, really. All right. And as far as gimmicks go, last but not least. Okay, this is the Universal Monsters Blu-ray box set. And, uh, well, they put it in a coffin. You've probably seen this. Some of you may have it. As it says on, on the back, included is Dracula, of course, Frankenstein, the mummy, Invisible Man, Bride of Frankenstein, the Wolf Man, Phantom of the Opera, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, yes. In a fine-looking coffin. Okay. It's quite nice indeed. You open it up. You get this. And so that's basically, it's the coffin and then just the box set, you know, that's it. They just put a, made a coffin, put the box set in there, and Bob's your uncle. That's what I'm saying right now. But this has got a ton of stuff in it, which is really cool. Obviously, first and foremost, i show you the back. Nice fold-out book here with great scenes from those classic Universal films. And then... Eight Blu-rays, folks. Eight freaking Blu-rays right there of all of the classic Universal Monster films. Absolutely amazing. Really. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. No, oh, no. It does not. So you got... Of course, they... With something like this, they're going to include a book, The Original House of Horror. That is just nice. And they talk about all the films. For example, there's a part about Frankenstein and so forth. Of course, they have Creature from the Black Lagoon, naturally. Really cool. So, it comes with this book, The Original House of Horror. And all of the posters in postcard form. Really well reproduced. Very cool. Oops. There we go.
Dracula. I always, always love that poster. Really quite nice indeed. The Wolfman. The Mummy. And, of course, the Invisible Man. So there you go, folks. Uh, quite a, you know, a great set. I forget what I paid for this. It, I don't think it was that much. I, I'm kind of thinking it was 40 bucks somewhere in there. I mean, it's eight Blu-rays. So I was like, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. Let's get the, the whole deal, you know what I'm saying? No. And it, it all comes in this handy little coffin. Okay. So that is really quite nice indeed. Fits in there. I don't know what the hell is a special note. I'll have to look at that. There's that. And there you go. That is the fa the uh, Universal Monsters Blu-ray case. Let me check this out. What the fuck this is? It's weird. Don't know. Not sure. Okay, folks. Let me get back to the chat because I know a few people have probably chimed in. Whilst I've been showing off these the physical media, but I'm still not done yet. Well, we're about to get to the spicy part, folks. The spicy part. Uh, I tell you now. Uh, Apex says, uh, "Wow, that Star Wars Super Eight belongs in a museum." Well, fortunately, the black and white one, which is what I have, is you can get them. I mean, they're on eBay. They're going to run you, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 bucks in good shape. I think the color sound version of that is much more expensive, you know. And, of course, if the colors are still good, it's going to be even more expensive on it. Well, says they kind of did that with records in Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Super 8 original home movies. That's it, folks. Steve says, Captain Company ran the ads in Erie. Creeping famous monsters. Oh, yes. Super 8 ads all the time. Get your projectors out. It's home movie time, folks. Oh, Eric is here. Hello, Eric. Good Lord. Good evening to you, my fine sir. Jägermeister and Evil Dead 2, a great experience, says Apex. A few people appear to have dipped, but hello to anyone I may have missed. Okay. Book of the Dead. It's the Book of the Dead. Love Masters of Horror. It is fantastic. You know, and that mausoleum set, it's pretty hilarious. <clears throat> I've got the series, but not the box set. It is a great series to have, folks. Uh, you can't go wrong, you know, regardless of the type, you know, of set you have. Steve says, the episode based on Wrightson's creepy story with the hideous girl. Yeah, Jennifer. That's the Dario Argento I was just talking about. Yes. Jennifer based on the Bernie Wrightson story. And... Who got him to do that? Does anybody know? Who was the dude? The Bernie Wrightson fan. Bernie Wrightson. Are you sure it was Bernie Wrightson or, or was it Jeff Jones? It was either Jeff Jones or Bernie Wrightson, but the actor Stephen Weber is the guy that got Jennifer into the hands of Dario Argento, believe it or not. He was the one that was like, you got to do this one. Forbidden Planet with Anne Francis, indeed. $10 is a great deal for that Forbidden Planet DVD and box. Nice. Yeah, as I said, I mean, it's been years, Eric, but you can still get them. I, I think, check on... Let's, let's take a little look, shall we? We're going to take a look uh, very soon, and we'll just keep that in mind, and we'll see if uh, somebody's still selling that thing. 
it's a great deal even at 30 or 40 bucks folks you can't go wrong i mean it's got a it's got a mini robbie the robot in there dang i could use a robbie robbie at walmart yep got that one yep and it, it is beautiful and it's yeah it's the one that lights up and talks it is a beauty Roberta, the sex robot. Whoa. Yes, indeed. Now I really want one. I got a 14-inch Robbie robot. I, that was the Walmart release. It well, talks and walks. I've got it, too. You may be able to see it. It's right there. It's on the top shelf. Probably a little. There it is. Right over my shoulder. Right on the top shelf. That is my, the large size Robbie. And it's a beauty. It is a beauty, folks. There's no doubt about that. It was a Walmart exclusive. One of the strangest things that had, this happened like five years ago, four or five years ago. Walmart put that out. They also had a 14-inch version of the Iron Giant as well, which I should have gotten. I didn't get it. I like that movie. That was a good movie, but I, I had to get the Robbie. And for 20 bucks, and then Tom, I, you know, I checked back. As a matter of fact, I wanted to get another one, you know, but I was like, you know, I bet you the price is going to go down on those things. So I waited. And sure enough, the price that where I was living in Georgia, the price went down to 15 bucks. And I was like, I wonder if it's going to go down to $12. That's my thinking, right? You know? And so I go back and it's gone. So they somebody just snagged the last two or three for 15 bucks, which is an insane deal. So bloody cheap. I think you can get them for between 40 to 60 bucks on eBay now, which is still good. But why Walmart decided to, who was the dude? Who was the suit in the room was like, hey, fellas, I've got a great idea. Why don't we take a film that's like 70 years old? You know, the Forbidden Planet. Remember that film? And everybody in the room's like, what? I've never heard of it. What the hell are you talking about? Well, remember that robot, Robbie the Robot? He was really cool. Let's make a 14-inch wa uh, walking, talking, and uh, that lights up, you know, Robbie the Robot. And we'll sell that as a Walmart exclusive. I mean, whoever did that was absolutely fantastic, and somebody should buy him a drink. I swear to God. Uh, I, I, you know, who knows? I don't know how well it sold, but uh, it's one of the greatest things Walmart ever did, in my opinion. One of the greatest things. Robbie skimps on martinis, but he doesn't on Kentucky bourbon. If you know what I mean, and I hope that you do, Steve Harrison. To be fair, I want one as well. Shadow Hawk Talks. Apex says, sub to my channel. There you are, folks. That's Apex Comics channel. And Eric Boyd, put your channel up there as well, for Christ's sake. But go on, head on over, folks. Subscribe to the Apex channel. Eric says, I've not seen any of these box sets before that I can recall. Glad you're showing these off. Oh, and I'm not even done yet. Wait until you guys see what I got. You're going to see it in just a few minutes. Okay. Can you spell controversy, Eric? I think you can. And we're about to step right into it. Okay. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Hang on for your lives. I think that was a song by UFO. I'm not mistaken. Uh, Eric says, we need a special edition DVD Blu-ray box set for Werewolf versus Nudist Colony. Yes, with a live nudist inside. That's what I'm thinking right now. With a live nudist in every box, Eric. <laughs> we have to make it somehow... <laughs> 
So the box would be like, it'd be like something like this, but it'd be like six feet tall, you know, six feet high, three foot wide with a live nudist in every box, werewolf versus nudist column. That would be an expensive box set. And it would be, it'd have to be manufactured in Malaysia, I think. Um, Tom says, I have the book Universal Horrors by Tom Weaver. Amazing how many horror films Universal made in the sound era. Yes. Steve says, I had the Universal collection with three busts, Frankie, Wolfman, and Dracula. Greta painted likenesses. Reco Veralius is here. Hello. I've only watched a movie from an original DVD once in my lifetime. I felt rich. Wrightson did Jennifer. Okay. It sold out very quickly here in Connecticut. Yeah, you know, for some reason, Tom, in Georgia, uh, one of the stores, because there were two Walmarts kind of near where I live. So I got the one. And then I would occasionally check back with both of them. Now, it's sold out in one. They were just gone. But the other one still had two, I believe it was two or three maximum. And they were, le you know, that were left. They were just sitting there on the shelf. They marked them down to 15 bucks. A few weeks later, of course, they were gone. Jeez. I just, I, you know, for some reason, I just thought, man, that thing's, they're going to take it down to 12 bucks and I'm going to pounce. And uh, I screwed that one up. Apex, buy them while they're hot. That is the deal. Pirating is a crime. No one told the guy in Chinatown where I got most of mine. August Ascetic is here. No, I don't have that book by Weaver, but I have the book of monsters by Dennis Guilford. Eric says, I like the way you think horror, Mike. Apex says, six-inch live nudist comes with the movie. There you go right there, folks. Okay, so now we have to, what well, we have to come up with a, a, an incredible shrinking ray as well. Good Lord. I could just see it now. Um, Eric says, since horror Mike said so, here is a link to my ch channel, I am filming new material this weekend. Excellent news, Eric. That is great to hear. Folks, head on over to Eric's channel and subscribe as well. Werewolf says, I would buy two of those nudist colony box sets. Don't tell the wife. There you go right there, folks. Steve says, I've been looking out. I've been lucking out in DVDs and Blu-rays. Freddy 8 DVD Nightmare Set. The Marx Brothers Collection, I've got that one. The whole Red Dwarf series, to name just three. The Red Dwarf series would be a good one. Amazingly enough, they got the Red Dwarf series on Tubi. Can't even believe it, folks. That is stunning. Apex, do you cover Silver Age comics on your channel? As he, and he says, yes, I do. Thanks again, Horror Mike. You're a very welcome, Eric. All right, folks. So I just showed you some specialty stuff that I've had for a long time. Now, a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think, I mentioned the fact that I'd ordered some new ones, right? I got them, okay? And this is how it went, okay? I'm going to bring them out. Jesus Christ. Here we go. All righty. It's a mixture of Blu-rays and DVDs. Okay. So what happened is that I went to this website, right? And uh, I was looking, I was just kind of looking to see if they had ones that I was looking for. Rarely is it the case that I can find like specific DVDs or Blu-rays on one site and they have them all and they're at a good price. You know how that sometimes it's like, oh shit, this one, this site has got like three, but the other one's got two and they don't have them all. Well, then I went to eBay and I started looking around and I found this seller. Okay. They're a seller. They got a 
ton of Blu-rays and uh, DVDs. As far as I know, it's all free shipping, right? So I got five, a total of five Blu-rays and DVDs from this place. And uh, when you buy, for instance, if you buy three, you get 15% off. Okay. If you buy five or more, you get 20% off. So I bought five. I was looking for all of these and uh, they were already reasonably priced, but buying the five delivered with, of course, free shipping, it, they were all eight bucks each. That was it. Eight bucks flat delivered tax, everything. So I think it was a really good deal. They're all brand spanking new. Now you can, of course, find them used on eBay, but guess what? You're going to find them used on eBay for five bucks, like maybe the shadow, and you're going to pay another five bucks for shipping. So suddenly it's 10 bucks for a used Blu-ray. These are brand new, right? So you got to find some place that's selling all the ones that you want. Well, I found this one seller that has got a ton of stuff. And of course, science fiction and horror oriented type stuff that I am usually looking for naturally. And uh, so here's how it goes, folks. Now, these, the first ones, as you've seen already, it's the shadow on Blu-ray. And, uh, you know, it's just the standard Blu-ray. Nothing, no bells or whistles, you know, eight bucks flat delivered. And it's a fantastic film. We were talking, we always end up talking about these films in the, Early to mid 90s, there was a for some reason, there was a pulp resurgence in films. Everybody was making pulp films. You had The Shadow, of course, The Phantom, starring Billy Zane, and uh, The Rocketeer. Fantastic, you know, the total pulp character, The Rocketeer, that whole thing, the great Dave Stevens character, and uh, and so forth. You know, it. I don't know what the deal was with the early to mid 90s and the sudden studio obsession with pulp films, but they did a good job on most of them. The Shadow is fantastic. I love this film. It just, you know, perhaps Alec Baldwin's greatest film, you know, <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, the uh, and uh, so that was a fun, that was one that I really wanted. I'm still looking for, uh, I've got to get the Rocketeer and the Phantom. I'm definitely going to pick those up. But this was also both of these. I love these. And the guy was just happened to be selling these, the double feature DVD. Of course, Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight. Man. I hopefully you guys have seen these. They're both great. I think they're far better than most of the stuff that was ever in the series. These films just kick butt. There is no doubt about that. They're a ton of fun. Highly recommended. Once again, brand spanking new double feature DVD for eight bucks. All of these are eight bucks. Okay. With the pricing. And I'm going to show you guys the ebay store i have no affiliation with this ebay store uh it's just i think they deliver probably they probably have the best price for new blu-rays this one is just a must-have there's no doubt about it westworld the original 1973 film of course yule brenner richard benjamin james brolin fantastic cast fantastic film michael crichton one of our great american science fiction writers especially of the latter 20th century no doubt about that of course famous for west world the andromeda strain jurassic park congo prey which is a fantastic novel about nanotechnology gone terribly wrong if you haven't read that find prey p-r-e-y that is one creepy freaking book and totally plausible because you know the way Michael Crichton worked. The guy researched the hell out of his stuff. He, you know, of course, had a scientific mind. And uh, 
his stuff was, you know, very well done and plausible, uh, no doubt. And Westworld is one of those films. Okay. So uh, in any case, I kind of, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit there, folks, because let me first, let's go back. Where the hell is, oh, there it is. Let's go back for a second to the double feature, Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight, okay? Because I've got to, I got to show you this. I already prepped all of these trailers, so this is the classic uh, vampire slaughter scene from Bordello of Blood. Yes! I say yes to that, folks, <laughs> right there. Double feature, Bordello of Blood and Demon Knight. This is literally a fantastic double feature to watch like on a Saturday night. There is no doubt about that. Billy Zane in Demon Knight is just freaking awesome. Both of these films, they're just stellar. It, it, I mean, Bordello of Blood, I think, is even more of a horror comedy, although there is some comedic, you know, our comedic elements to Demon Knight, no doubt about that. But uh, just fantastic. Great great double feature and it's something that i think i saw bordello of blood on tubi uh a while back i don't think either of these films are on tubi for example you know so it's just it's to me great to have on physical media that that's what i'm saying to you folks and just getting back to westworld it's it is truly one of the great science fiction films of all time. I definitely put easily put it in the top 20. It might be in the top 10. You know, it's way, way up there. What a great flick, you know, uh, on DVD or Blu-ray. It doesn't matter. It's just they happen to have it cheap on Blu-ray. Eight bucks. Once again, brand spanking new. So. I couldn't pass up that offer, folks. I couldn't pass it up. Now, now we're gonna we're heading into controversy land here, folks. Bit of a controversy for you. All right. So, some of you have seen my the video I made. It's on my channel. It's all about Colossus: The Forbin Project. Okay, this is a film that came out in 1970, based upon a novel written in the probably about 1965, about uh, AI, about supercomputers uh, gone wrong, quote unquote, horribly wrong. And it's not only pretty hilarious, but absolutely grim as hell, dark as hell. This film, if you haven't seen it, get it. And uh, if you watch my video, you'll find out what the hell happened to me? I originally put this on my list on my Vudu list. That's a platform you can rent movies. Vudu, V-U-D-U. -U. And uh, so I put it on there. And I uh, kind of forgot about it. I went back a few months later and it was gone. I was like, shit, man. They took it off of Vudu. They pulled it from every legitimate streaming platform. It is no longer available folks you can get it on pirate platform sure you can get it on vimeo pirated sure you can do that it's not on any legitimate rental platforms okay that's the reality of it uh fortunately this particular ebay store ha has the dvd version which is fine with me and so i got it once again new eight dollars now, there is a Blu-ray version that was just released in 2018 from Shout Factory. And uh, it's, I, I would assume, absolutely fantastic. It's also going to run you 25 bucks. I don't have 25 bucks. I've got $8. That's why I got the DVD version. And I've got it, okay? Because for some reason, Universal was like, hey, we need to yank this film about AI. And the thing about Colossus, the Forbin project, folks, to keep in mind is that it's about a scientist that creates a supercomputer, right, called Colossus in the United States. And 
almost immediately after the supercomputer goes online, it finds its mate. And that mate is a supercomputer in Russia. And the Russian computer and the American computer link up and they decide that humans should not be controlling the earth anymore. That is what the Colossus, Colossus the Forbin project is all about. And uh, so there's a double whammy right there, folks. Not only is it about a uh, logical uh, uh, extrapolation of the concept of artificial intelligence and supercomputers, uh, absolutely relevant to today, but it has a lot to do with the other relevant uh, geopolitical aspects of what's going on right the freak now. Okay. So if you haven't seen Colossus, the Forbin project, check it out. Uh, and uh, if you've seen it and you like it, get it on physical media because it may not be around much longer. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You never know in this crazy world, right? And not only that, but you guys know it too. Uh, various studios have been literally revising classic films. And when I say revising, they go back to a film that they say that they think has got some scene that's problematic, that might be considered racist or sexist. They either take that scene out or they literally revise the scene, right? They just edit it uh, and take the offensive material out. That's what's going on with streaming films now. A lot of people are watching films that have classic films that have been revised. Well, with physical media, they can't touch your DVDs or Blu-rays, folks. It's there forever, okay? That's what I'm saying. So it is very important with a film like Colossus, the Forbin Project. Once again, on my channel, I have a, a uh, video about Colossus, the Forbin Project. You should check it out. I think it turned out really well. It's very interesting. It's all about this film and what happened to it, why Universal Pictures yanked it, you know, from distribution, uh, from streaming distribution, I should say. So there's that. And it leads me to the last film, the last physical media film, folks, that you have to see it to believe it. It is a joy to behold. It is the greatest Blumhouse produced film they ever touched. Absolutely bar none by a mile. It is The Hunt. Okay, let me explain the story behind this and why you should probably get this. You should watch the film if you like the film. And I think you probably will. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trailer to it. Uh, but uh, what happened is this film came out. It was released by Universal Pictures in 2020. It's a Blumhouse film, right? And uh, in 2020, of course, that was the presidential election year. OK, people didn't like it. The cancel pigs didn't like this film too much. Yeah, because it's got a Mississippi chick kicking elitist ass all over the place. Right. Woke tart elitist getting their asses kicked by a humble Mississippi gal. That's basically the gist of this movie. And it is glorious. The Hunt is just one of the greatest political thrillers I've ever seen. It's a political thriller. It's a comedy. It's gory. It's violent. It is just fantastic. The Hunt. Okay. So Universal uh, Pictures yanked this film because of uh, overwhelming, uh, apparently, from what I've read, uh, Cancel Pigs. Uh, attacking Universal Pictures, demanding that they yank the film. They yanked it, and they waited until a year after the election, okay, at the end of 2021, going into 2022, to actually release this film. It was that freaking controversial. I cannot stress it enough, folks. Uh, 
you might want to think about getting this on DVD or Blu-ray. It is available on both. It's a fantastic film. It is so freaking hilarious and so satisfying. And it's something that you would never even think would come out of Blumhouse, much less any other studio. Because they aren't taking the woke tard left aside, folks. No way. They are fucking kicking their ass in this film. It is The Hunt. And I've got a little trailer for you right now. What is all of this? Did you see that article? Every year, these liberal elites kidnap a bunch of normal folks like us and hunt us for sport. The last I heard, free speech still exists. Don't First Amendment me. It wasn't real. Everybody get out of here! We were joking. There's been a killing spree. You gotta come here right now. You actually believed we were hunting human beings for sport. <laughs> but you are. We have an opportunity here to teach these people. These are not real people. They're actors. I'm playing an Arab refugee, but I identify as white. I think that's problematic too, in some way. You wanted it to be real, so you decided it was. What kind of sick people would even think of something like that? White people. We're the worst. The hunt, folks. Get it while you can. Okay, that's what I'm saying right now. They effectively buried it. They yanked it. And they finally put it back, you know, in into distribution. But after the fact, way too hot for 2020. Okay, so as a politically charged thriller, this is one of the most consequential in decades. Okay, there's no doubt about it. Check out The Hunt. Betty Gilpin, this actress, is just fantastic. Of course, Hilary Swank is great in this film as well. Ike Barinholtz. Uh, from Mad TV is in this. The guy who I keep forgetting, he's from uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's in this film. I just can't remember his damn name. Great cast. Fantastic. The acting is uh, superb. The action, the gore, the dialogue, the screenplay is brilliant. The hunt. Get it? So I got it brand new from the same place for eight bucks okay i got all five of those that i've just shown you so there was a 20 percent discount free shipping and we're going to take a look at the place right now folks in case you're interested once again i have no affiliation with this store okay this uh, you're seeing westworld now with westworld the blu-ray it's already cheap. It's $8.99. Some of the other ones were more expensive. So it when I bought five of them, it just all they all came out to eight bucks with tax shipped, you know, each. Which was quite a deal. So it's called Groove Entertainment. I'm gonna drop this link into the chat so you can you can find it from here. There it is, folks. That's the eBay that you can find. You can go to the store, see what they have if you're interested. Now, I know you guys can, you know, of course, chances are, actually, chances are slim. Let me explain something to you. I think most of you will agree. Your chances of finding Colossus anywhere, like in a thrift store used or whatever, are slim to none. You might find a VHS, 
but I don't think you're going to find a Blu-ray or a DVD. You're not going to find the hunt. I can tell you that much right now. Chances of fi finding Westworld uh, on Blu-ray are slim to none. You might find it. You might find a DVD of it. I don't know, but you're going to have to look. I don't know about this double feature. You might find uh, these films separate. Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood, the Tales from the Crypt films. I don't think you're going to find The Shadow for two bucks. I really doubt it. Not in Blu-ray. You may find find it on VHS or uh, or you might find it on DVD. You know, cheaper, used. You know, but my point is, is that these guys sell them all new, all free shipping. If you buy three or more, it's 15% off. If you buy five or more, it's 20% off. And that spells cheap, folks. That spells really cheapy. So that's the thing about the physical media that I just bought. Um, and I hope that I... Showed you some stuff that you haven't seen before, you know. So he says all those DVDs, Blu-rays I mentioned were secondhand for under 10 bucks a pop. Right. Well, there you go. That's that's exactly it, Steve. These are new. They're eight bucks flat. Apex says Alex Baldwin, Alec Baldwin's best movie, The Shadow, I think. You're right. I would totally uh, agree with that. Love The Shadow. Just watched it again. It's a great flick. Worthy of DVD or Blu-ray. I think you guys would agree. Now I'm switching to the TV so I can watch Mike on the big screen. Good Lord, that's a frightening prospect, August. Check out Horror Mike's website here. Thank you, Apex. I still haven't seen The Shadow. It's a good one. It's still not, it's not on, I haven't seen it as of yet on Tubi, unfortunately. Doc Savage from 1976 with Ron Eli, once again. Yeah, that's that's another, and you know who did preliminary art on that Apex was uh, Jim Steranko. Westworld, great movie, yep. Great double Bill Bordello, Corey Feldman, and he's really good. Dennis Miller is freaking great in that film. He was made for it. He was made for Bordello of Blood and uh, Corey Feldman. Absolutely fantastic in it. Westworld and Andromeda Strain are among my favorites way up there. Agreed, Eric. They're both, I, I watch them. Those are two films I watch once a year. You know those once a year films, folks, that you watch because you just they're just so damn good? Those are two right there. And actually with Westworld, uh, not as much because I didn't have a DVD or Blu-ray. I would rent it. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? You end up renting them for three or four bucks. And like after a couple of times, you could have bought the freaking Blu-ray for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? So I just got it on Blu-ray. Good Lord. Angie Everhart is smoking hot in Bordello of Blood. She is so, so fine. Wah, wah, wee, wah. Horror Mike's first man on Mars via eBay. Thank you for that eBay link. Eric, I appreciate that. Copyright strike. Are, am I, <laughs> let me go back. Hold on. Am I back, folks? Am I back? Somebody put a comment in there. Apparently, I'm not. Okay, good. All right. So I so the it, the screen went black. Good lord. 
I wonder if they got, they must have gotten me for, maybe they got me for showing the hunt. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't exactly a copyright strike. If you know what I'm saying, and I think that you do. Okay. Yeah, they got me crazy Hungarian. Incredible. Come back to us, Horror Mike. We may just need to wait. Yes. This happened. Uh, yeah, the creature from the Black Lagoon 3D feature. <clears throat> Incredible. Okay. Then I did come back from the grave. Mike didn't realize it. No, I, I was just rambling on there, man. Temporary suspension of the stream. <laughs> so the, Somebody, maybe, you know, it was either Colossus, the Foreman Project, or the Hunt. Some powers that be didn't like it that much. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, and maybe the, those powers that be weren't human. Huh? Talking about some stuff that shouldn't be talked about right, about right now. I don't know. Physical media are precious. It is BS, this removal, revising, and editing of certain scenes. It is happening, folks. I'm not kidding. I, there, there, it, you know, you can read horror stories about some of these freaking movies that they have revised and edited. Uh, so with physical media, once you have it, they can't do anything to it. That is that is the point. Apex, the hunt, I need to watch it. Yes, yes, you do, Apex. And as a matter of fact, folks, you can catch it, believe it or not. Of course, it's universal. So that's NBC, that's Peacock. There is a platform called Peacock, which is NBC Universal. It's for free. You can watch it for free right now on Peacock. Okay. So check that out. If you watch stuff, you know, uh, if you can add channels. And so forth. Check it out because it's on there, folks. Uh, and uh, it's just a hell of a film. It is one hell of a film. It's the greatest thing that Blumhouse ever did because they have made a lot of crap. Okay, I think you guys might agree with that. They made a they made quite a lot of crap, really. Uh, but for some reason, the hunt they just. Somebody just convinced them to make this movie. I don't know how. It's fantastic. You know, it's like a film that speaks for the other half. That's basically it. You know, that's all I can say. Look, there is, it's interesting because there's point counterpoint in the film, which is to say that, yeah, these people are hunting uh, people and people that they hate because of their political affiliations. You know, these elitist, uh, leftist elitist swine are hunting people. And that, that's an absolute fact. But there are some point-counterpoint arguments within the film. Overall, though, what it's saying is like, you know, it, it definitely is acknowledging the, that, especially with the heroin, Okay, uh, the Mississippi girl that's kicking their asses, that these people are human and that the elitists are a bunch of swine. That really that's the ultimate statement in this. And it's just it, the, the resolution of the film is satisfying. It's fantastic. I I mean, it's it. This is a film that I am going to, you know, I, this it's absolutely a yearly film for me. There's no doubt about it. The hunt. If you ever want to like feel great, really great after watching a movie, watch the hunt. You'll see what I'm saying. It's it takes no prisoners. It is absolutely fantastic. Great film. The cancel pigs got it, man. They got they got Universal to yank that film in five seconds during the 2020 presidential election year. Because it made them really nervous. Let's put it that way. Just ordered the hunt. Yes. There you go. Uh, Australian $10 including postage. Yes. Werewolf, you are going to dig the shit out of this film. I would like to get a, a commentary after you've watched it, my good man. 
Steve says, Hunt was very good. Lots of twists and turns. Yes, that is the great thing. As kind of like what I was saying, there's point counterpoint in the film where you, uh, you go, okay, wait a second. Why is that character doing this? And then it's, it is revealed. It's that, that type of a thing that's going on. And uh, it's very clever in that way because it's not just going, okay, look, you know, you've got these bastard elitists and they're doing this and these poor people that are being hunted. It's not just totally black and white. Uh, and that's really good. That's the, what you want to do. You want a well-rounded film, you know? Uh, but it is just, it's so well-written. It is incredibly satisfying. Once again, folks, there's the eBay link to that guy selling the cheap new DVDs and Blu-rays. Great price. That is an excellent price for that. Good, no doubt about it, man. That's about six fifty. Yep, you got it. Wunderbar. We have a five dollar bin in Walmart where you find the odd treasure. Yes. Highly unlikely you're going to find the hunt, <laughs> Steve. I I can tell you, as a matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet on it. They ain't going to be carrying the hunt there. Okay. All right. Well, at least I'm back. I went out just after the Bordello clip. Hmm. Maybe it was, you know, it could have been that too. Of course, there is that, the song, Ballroom Blitz by The Sweet which is a really kick-ass tune. It's so great in that movie with, you know, that whole scene with that soundtrack. Mm. Top-notch stuff, man. Music Ballroom Blitz. There you go. Yep. That Ballroom Blitz. The sweet. There you go. So, you mean, so it wasn't a supercomputer that shut me down, Steve? The Hunt was pushed as a woke film. No. Yeah, total bullshit, Steve. <laughs> Absolutely. They were trying, somebody was trying to say that to turn people off, but it was the absolute opposite. It is the anti-woke film. In any case, folks, there you go. That is... That's my physical media portion of uh, this evening's entertainment. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and guess what? Now we're going to dive into Tubi land. Oh, yes, it's Tubi time, folks. Good Lord, get ready. Because we're about to jump into some stuff that, well, I think you're just going to dig the living hell out of. Let me get the, okay. I got to get that and bring in the screen. Is it to be screen? There you are. Oopsie. All right. There we go. All right, folks. Boy, is it a, it's a, it's just a potpourri tonight, folks, of all kinds of flicks. Some really good, some really bad. Let's just put it that way. Then on the bad side, we start off with Empire of Ash 2, People Nothing, okay? Film from 1989. And uh, I'm just going to skip right over it because it's just so suck acidly bad. Uh, I couldn't, I watched like 20 minutes and my eyes and ears were indeed bleeding, okay? It was so bad. Fortunately, uh, another 1989 film did was slightly more redeeming, and I could actually was it's totally watchable. It's Lords of the Deep from 1989. You guys may have seen this film. Okay, here's the um, here's the story, folks. Lords of the Deep 1989, as you recall, the film The Abyss, which also came out in 1989. Now, this is a Roger Corman-produced film starring Bradford Dillman, Priscilla Barnes, and Daryl Haney. 
A deep sea research group goes missing after a mysterious creature hunts them down, leaving a new crew to find and stop it before it strikes again. Okay. So that's Lords of the Deep. And it just so happens that I have a little trailer for you. For Lords of the Deep. Six miles below the ocean surface, in the deepest part of the Pacific, man has arrived. We have no idea what to expect down there. They are scientists. Yeah, let's trust in the business of science, huh? They are invaders. So far, so good. But there are some places man was never meant to go. I don't see any sign of the crew. What? What do you think it is, then? I don't know. The thing could be dangerous. But it's alive. Contact closing. The entire sub crew just disappeared. What the hell's going on? What? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm not sure how they got it, but they did. Martel is offering us a future. From the Academy Award-winning special effects team that brought you Aliens <laughs> comes Lords of the Deep, the ultimate underwater adventure. There you go, folks. The trailer for Lords of the Deep. It's watchable. Uh, I thought it was, you know, entertaining enough. It certainly is. and It's Roger Corman produced. So I think what happened is he got the jump on the abyss. Like, it's the same year. They both came out in the same year. So I think he just kind of got a jump on that film. He knew it was coming out. And uh, they cobbled this one together. I that's, At least that's what I think. Because it, it has, absolutely has an abyss-like quality to it. You know, with the creature and everything. So, in any case, it's on Tubi. You might want to check it out if you're into that type of underwater adventure, sci-fi, fantasy kind of deal. Now, the next film, uh, it's got some certain elements for it that are redeemable. Uh, no doubt about that. It's Biohazard from 1985. And a couple of those elements, of course, belong to Angelique Pettyjohn. Oh, yes. The Triple D uh, legend of Fred Olin Ray movies <laughs> and other flicks, of course. But uh, in any case, this is uh, the classic. I don't know if you guys, it may have been released under another title. I keep thinking it was Biohazard. I want to say... <sighs> It, may, it, it was something else, but in any case, the description, this early 80s sci-fi horror cult classic is about what happens when an alien monster tries to override a psychic's will and take over planet Earth. Aldo Ray, Angelique Pettyjohn, Fred Olin Ray is also in it. Of course, he directed it. Uh, so there you go. That is Biohazard. Yes, Angelique Petty John unleashes those triple D cannons during the film. So there is that. The creature is kind of funny, too. It's it's fairly well done, you know, the creature itself. It's not bad. Um, I think it's just one of those movies you got to watch. It's very low budget. Of course, it's Fred Olin Ray, you know, so there you go with that. But it was watchable. I found it entertaining enough. Uh, so, and it's got a rather hilarious breaking the fourth wall ending to it. So, there you go. Biohazard, 1985. There we go. All right, folks. Well, we're going to dip into the 1970s for a second. 
Uh, with uh, Demon Lover. Now, I don't know where the hell this thing came from, but uh, it is a 1977. Whoopsie. It's a 1977 horror film about an unsuspecting housewife who is introduced to a world of evil. Yes, that's the description. Gunnar Hansen is in this film, folks, and Val Myrick, believe it or not. It's really low budget, uh, and uh, I think they found the one print that a dog had stepped on and partially devoured, okay? That's what I'm saying right now, because, man, this print is just freaking awful. So watch at your own peril, folks, Demon Lover. It, uh, it does have a lot of TNA. There is a lot of TNA in the film, so... That is one quality, but it's just the, the the problem is is that the actual video quality itself is just not very good. Uh, at least the the two B copy is not that hot. Grim, yeah. Oh, we're down here. Yes, folks. Grim is an apt title for this film because it's pretty damn grim when you watch it. That's what I'm saying right now. 1996 film. A monster called Grimm awakens with, within the abandoned mind, mines, sorry, mines of Woodland Hills, Virginia, and begins wreaking havoc upon the property and the people in town. Man, I'll tell you, the first 30 minutes of this film, nothing happens. Uh, really, nothing freaking happens in this film. They, they may have, you know, just as well run 30 minutes of uh, leader, white leader, okay? Uh, it's just, whoa. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I did not watch the entire film, okay? I could not. It's just, it's pretty grim, folks, pretty damn grim. On the other hand, The Phantom Empire from 1988, which just happens to be another Fred Olin Ray spectacular. Oh, yes. Um, starring Sybil Danning, Ross Hagen, Jeffrey Combs in an early ro role, uh, Robert Quarry, believe it or not, and uh, Russ Tamblin is also in this film, as well as Michelle Bauer, who, uh, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm saying. She plays the cave bunny, a uh, cave woman, who is naked pretty much half the time during this film. There is also some really good stop motion animation in this flick. Now, I don't know if the stop motion animation was made specifically for this film, The Phantom Empire, or not. Uh, I just don't know. I haven't looked into it, but the animation itself is really good. Dinosaur animation, really cool. A motley team of Lost City Explorers comes up against mutants, cave girls, a.k.a. cave bunnies, dinosaurs, and an evil leather space queen. Yes, folks, that leather space queen portrayed by none other than Sybil Danning. Out to stop their treasure hunt. And, uh, yeah, I watched the entire freaking movie, and it was actually, well, there were a lot of entertaining aspects to it, folks. Let me just put it that way. <clears throat> and I do have a little trailer for you from, or at least I thought I did. Hold on. Maybe I don't. You know, the Phantom Empire. Oh, there it is. Yes, I do. I propose an expedition to find the lost city of Relia. I want the map. Something down in that cave killed the entire Reitman party. I paid for this party, and I'm in all the way. Oh, face it, Doc. It was a myth then, it's a myth now. Look, there's a light up there. Relia. Hey, 
Don't worry, girls. I'll think of something. Come back and rescue you. Oh. Oh. All right, let's burn some rubber. And yes, that was the uh, modified Robbie the robot, that robot in the cave. Indeed. And as you saw, Jeffrey Combs, Russ Tamblin, Sybil Double D Danning there on the scene. Look, it's an entertaining film. I mean, it's ridiculous beyond belief. <laughs> but there are some certain aspects to the film uh, that are rather redeeming, folks. Uh, and uh, two of them belong to Sybil Danning. Let's just put it that way. And another two belong to Michelle Bauer, our space cave girl. Uh, not space cave girl, our cave bunny. That's that's what I'm talking about right now. Our cute little cave bunny, Michelle Bauer. Uh, in the animation, you just saw a little bit of that dinosaur animation, which was pretty damn good, you know. Uh, so there are really some really decent aspects to the Phantom Empire. All right. Let me get back to the chat because I know a few people have chimed in. Apex says, more anti-woke films, please. Yeah, sadly, Apex, they're, they are few and far between. But I highly recommend The Hunt. As a matter of fact, you said you saw that, didn't you? Or maybe you hadn't. I don't know. Lords of the Deep. Skip Empire of Ash... Yeah, and Empire of Ash 2. People, nothing. Okay, that's what I'm talking about right now. Yes, Lords of the Deep. I, I thought it was pretty good. You know, I thought it was rather entertaining. Crazy Hungarian says, Deep Star 6 is another great aquatic flick. Yes, agreed. And then there was the other one too, Crazy Hungarian. I think it was called Leviathan with Peter Weller. And that is another good one. And it, they all came out like in that same period. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there was a certain deep sea adventure, sci-fi horror type of craze going on there. And uh, yeah, Deep Star Six and Leviathan. I really definitely enjoyed those tremendously. Are those boobs the biohazard, folks? Right there. Angelique Pettyjohn. Good Lord. Boobs are not a biohazard. <laughs> Uh, you haven't met my wife, Apex. <laughs> Apex, Val Meyerick was a comic book artist credited in Demon Lover. Yes, isn't that bizarre? I don't know who he was in that film. It's on Tubi, Apex. You may be able to tell. I don't, I just, I gave up on that film after like a half an hour. I just couldn't take it, man. I couldn't take it. Um, yeah, Sybil Danning. Sybil Double D Danning is what I'm saying. Cave Bunnies. Cave Bunnies versus the Werewolf. There we go, folks. Now back to Tubi here. And we have Shockwaves, 1977. Uh, it's a pretty entertaining film. I've seen this film. I think I had it years ago on VHS. Uh, brutally vicious zombie stormtroopers engineered by Nazis in secret during World War II begin to rise from the depths for blood off the Florida coast. Starring Peter Cushing, Brooke Adams, John Carradine, folks. There's a triple threat right there for you. And it's a reasonably entertaining film. The zombies actually look pretty decent. I still have the movie poster. I have that actual poster right there. There's shockwaves. And it's pretty, that's a pretty damn cool poster. No doubt about that. And it's worth watching. It's worth a watch. Let's put it that way, folks. 
it might be a little slow, but, uh, you know, when it starts going, it's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good film, Shockwaves. Now we have two documentaries that you got to check out. First off, Doomed, the untold story of the Fantastic Four. And, uh, well, it says the untold story of Roger Corman's The Fantastic Four. Actually, Corman produced film, which turned out to be a tax dodge. It was never meant to be released. It was going, going to be a tax write-off, you know. Uh, and it's fascinating. If you've, if you've seen the 1994 film, and you can see it, I'm, I believe it's on YouTube, for example. It could be on Vimeo as well. Watch the film and then watch this documentary, which is on Tubi. It's fascinating. There's no doubt about it. Whoa, what a, a story behind this film. It's just incredible. As it says, a documentary that tells the history of the ill-fated movie version of the Fantastic Four that was executive produced by Roger Corman. And uh, the only thing I can say, folks, is this. This particular version of, uh, or uh, adaptation, let's say, of the Fantastic Four is the best to date. This million-dollar budget adaptation of the Fantastic Four beats any of the adaptations of the MCU by a mile, in my opinion. It's not to say that this is a great film, but it's just much better than those. That, that's what I'm telling you right now. And this documentary is a fascinating look at a film that was indeed doomed from the beginning. So check it out. It's on Tubi. And uh, this one as well. You got to check out Lost Soul. The Doom Journey of Richard Stanley's Island of Dr. Moreau. And it just so happens that the Island of Dr. Moreau, the film starring Val Kilmer and Marlon Brando, is also on Tubi. So you could watch the movie, then watch this documentary. Fascinating. Once again, uh, because all hell break loose, broke loose during the making of this film, folks. It was apparently just a nightmarish disaster on set. Um, and, of course, Richard Stanley famously uh, was fired. He walked off into the jungle, disappeared. Uh, he was... A <laughs> I'm not quite sure exactly how it went down, but apparently things got so bad before he was fired, he resorted to witchcraft uh, in a desperate attempt to, to get the film back on track. Of course, that failed miserably. He was fired, and John Frankenheimer came in to finish the film. Now, John Frankenheimer, of course, he directed The Prophecy, uh, from where that sleeping bag massacre scene comes from. And he also famously directed The Manchurian Candidate, the 1960s, one of the great political thrillers of all, all time. No doubt about that. So he came in and he salvaged the film and they released the film and so forth. But uh, as it says, a documentary, it looked behind the scenes of the 1996 critical failure Hollywood's biggest stars and the producers bet on this movie. So what went wrong? Like everything went wrong, folks. It was a complete disaster. Just fa a fantastic film to watch, especially if you've seen the this version of The Island of Dr. Moreau. Here we go. Now we're getting spicy. We're, this is what I call my blonde roll. Uh, row right here, folks. As you can see, it's three spicy blondes on the scene. Uh, and first, we start off with the series, The Lost World. I don't know if you guys ever watched this series, any of you guys, but I did. And uh, I thought, especially the first two seasons were very good. The third season kind of went off the rails uh, uh, 
a lot. Okay. And the, it just abruptly ended the third scene. That was it. It abruptly ended with no resolution and they never did a follow-up. They never even made a follow-up movie or anything, but man, Jennifer Odell and Rachel Blakely, the two female leads are awesome. Actually, uh, the acting in this series is largely great. The four main characters, including Blakely, Odell, William Snow, and uh, who was the other guy? Ah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, it may have been Richard Franklin, but don't quote me on that. In any case, really, really good acting. Generally speaking, uh, a very good series, especially for the first two seasons. It's all on Tubi right now. Jennifer Odell is like scorching hot in this freaking series. Anybody that's seen it, <clears throat> I think you would agree. Let's put it that way. Now let's get into some bizarre territory with crimes of passion. And when I say bizarre, you know why, folks. Well, it's because it's a Ken Russell film. Oh, yes. The... Uh, yeah, you know, if you've seen Ken Russell films, you know what I'm talking about. He directed Tommy, of course, and uh, Altered States, which is actually a great film. I love that that flick. Uh, but a lot of weird films. Ken Russell's just, you know, he's one of those guys. I think he also directed Lair of the White Worm, which was his adaptation of the Bram Stoker story. Lair of the White Worm, which is really odd and funny as well. Highly recommended. That is also on Tubi. But check it out. A gadget store owner who takes occasional surveillance jobs becomes captivated by his newest target, a fashion designer moonlighting as a prostitute. And that is, of course, the luscious Kathleen Turner, who is in this film, Along with Anthony Perkins, folks. Yeah, he's in it. And he's wonderfully creepy in Crimes of Passion. And, of course, I have a, a little trailer for you guys. There are no secrets in the dark. There is no act that cannot be committed. In Women in Love... He crossed forbidden boundaries. In altered states, he explored the unknown powers of the mind. Now he explores the most provocative power of all. A woman who lives in two worlds. A man who must lose himself to possess her. They are strangers. They are lovers. They are outlaws. But their crimes are crimes of passion. There you go, folks. A little trailer for Crimes of Passion right there. Kathleen Turner. Wearing that blonde wig, still looking real, real hot. No doubt about that. And, of course, Anthony Perkins peeking through the door right there. Creepy as ever. Good old good old Tony Perkins. My good fiends. Uh, and that brings us, of course, to naturally. It brings us to Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl. Yes, you heard that right, folks. It's a real film made in 2022. Hell hath no fury like a 50-foot-tall woman. Attack of the 50-foot cam girl. Uh, okay, look. It's a full moon feature release, right? Uh, so, it's a, uh, you know, it's got certain aspects to it that are good. And that's m mainly, I would say, the TNA factor is fairly decent, you know. And there is some good comedy in it. That's about it. 
In any case, when a social media star, Beverly Woods' latest brand, causes gargantuan side effects, the now 50-foot-tall influencer is ready to take on her haters. It's just a classic redo of uh, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, of course, in a modern setting. That's basically it, and with a lot of TNA. Okay, so that's what's happening with Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl. Oh, yes. There we go, folks. We're getting back to some... We're getting back to the 80s and 70s here. Okay, that's what I'm saying right now. And we start that off with the strange vice of Mrs. Ward. Huh. I think that's Mrs. Ward. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. 1971. And it's got that really hot babe in it, man. Uh, whose name, who's got a weird name. Edwidge Fennick. Fennich or Fennick. Just that really scorching hot uh, brunette that was in all those uh, Euro flicks, you know. As it says here, a diplomat's wife strays from her loveless marriage and is blackmailed by a mystery man, while a razor-blade-wielding serial killer terrorizes Vienna. And so it's, it's basically a giallo-style type of film. You know, I mean, you've got kind of grisly murders, you got nudity, uh, plenty of that, and you've got Edwidge Fennick, that stunning brunette who is portrayed here on the cover and uh, yeah she's really hot no doubt about that it's an all right film look if you like giallo style films you'll probably want to catch it or you've probably already seen it you know but uh, it is now on tubi so you might want to check that out next up we have bloody moon 1981, folks. Uh, I'd never even heard of this damn film until it popped up on Tubi. But check it out. It's a Spanish film, and it's Jess Franco. Or as they say here, Jesus Franco. Okay? But it's Jess Franco film. In this 80s horror flick, young women are hunted and killed in a language school in Spain while a psychotic killer gains power and momentum. Kind of odd, but uh, odd, odd description. And indeed, folks, I have a little bit of a trailer. Your kiss is cold and icy as death. Your embrace deep as the night. Nonsense. He wants to kill me too. Nights of blood, nights of terror that will leave you breathless. <coughs> Young girls in search of love and adventure become the prey of a bloodthirsty killer. A dream vacation becomes a nightmare. Bloody Moon, a film you won't see. There you go, folks. That's Bloody Moon, 1981. And there is plenty of blood. Okay, let's just put it that way. And of course, some really good TNA for an early 80s film. You may want to check it out. It is currently on Tubi. And uh, as far as the Tubi lineup tonight, last but certainly not least, <laughs> no doubt about this one, Burial Ground, The Gates of Hell Have Opened. Once again, from 1981, and uh, this is a really quite a grisly zombie film. As it says, a splatter classic 
about a cursed country estate besieged by horny house guests and the unusual relationship between a mother and her creepy young son. Yes, it is freaking bizarre, folks. It's burial ground. And uh, I don't know, you know, it, it is a, it's definitely a splatter classic. There is a lot of, there's a lot of gore in the film. There's some really cool looking zombies. And uh, there is the, this, the, son of this woman is definitely creepy as hell. There ain't no doubt about that. I happen to have a little bit of a trailer for you guys now. Somewhere. At least I thought I did. Oh, there it is. There you go, folks. That is burial, burial Ground, or Night of Terror, I guess, as it was otherwise referred to. One, uh, I mean, it, look, it's on Tubi. If you like zombie films, especially if you like Lucio Fulci-style gore zombie films with the slow-moving, really weird-looking zombies, check out Burial Ground. It's a... Uh, it's definitely a freakish zombie offering. Okay. That's what I'm saying right now. Let's go back to the chat, shall we? Apex says Roger Corman is 99 years old. Yes, indeed. Amazing, folks. Roger Corman, the man, the myth, the legend. Roger Corman, 99. Werewolf says, uh, you call it your 
blonde roll. I call it my toilet roll. Ooh, that's a that's a youcher right there, Werewolf. Werewolf says, um, how much does Kathleen Turner charge? I can afford 1984 prices, folks. Anthony Perkins played a creepy priest in Crimes of Passion. Yes, he was always leering. He was always leering about Apex. Eric says, post wall, post wall, Kathleen Turner or 1984 Kathleen Turner. 1984 Kathleen Turner. There we go. Okay. She was a babe, but boy, did she hit that wall. Holy Toledo. Susanna Hoffs. Well, it's because she kept walking like an Egyptian. I think it was good for her complexion or something. Or maybe she was an actual mummy. Well preserved. See what I'm saying? Bloody moon. It's that bloody moon. Knights of Terror. Yes, a.k.a. Burial Ground. Any news on the book, Mike? Yes, there is news and it's not great. Werewolf. It's all right. Here, let me remove this. Folks, as you may be aware of, I do have a new book. I did get the uh, proof copy. It's really cool. And uh, I thought I was going to get a notice by today, at least, that they were shipping the <laughs> printed copies out to me. No. It's going to be another week. There has been a delay. Okay, so next Friday, it should be live. Uh, so that's what's going on with Pre-Code Horror Comics, the original art edition. All right. And uh, so we're just going to have to wait one more week for this bad boy to come out. Thanks for asking, Eric. I mean, uh, Werewolf, I appreciate that. And, uh, but it'll be, yeah, next Friday, I think it'll be live. So you guys can check it out and grab a copy if you'd like. I think you're going to dig the hell out of it. Um, Apex says, trippy electronic music. Yes, I that score for Burial Ground is really quite true, especially 1981. You know, I mean, when you consider it, they were doing that 1980, doing that trippy electronic stuff for a gory zombie flick. And, of course, Lucio Fulci loved to do that, too. Like, for Zombie, his film Zombie, for example, and uh, what was that other one? Uh, the Beyond, you know, and, and a few others. So, folks, well, that, that concludes our, our show for tonight. It was a little rough. Too bad about that damn... Uh, bordello of blood cutting the damn show off for a second but uh what what can you say i mean I, you know you never know when the when you're just gonna get bounced by the youtube gods that's what i'm saying right now and well it happened good lord uh so in any case everybody have a great uh rest of your weekend and next week's going to be once again, Tubi just keeps going. Now, I can tell you one thing. Next week, next week as far as Tubi goes, we're going to have a few choice Herschel Gordon Lewis films coming down the pike. Uh, amongst others, you're going to want to check this out. There is no doubt about it, folks. Uh, it's going to be one hell of a show next weekend. And... Uh, as I say, everybody have a great weekend, and as is tradition, I'm going to leave you with, of course, Linda and, well, no, the Starfires doing Linda. You guys take care. I will talk to you soon. <laughs>